This is a small series on how we approach installing renewable technologies for our home and the various mistakes we made on the way. Links to the products discussed in this video are in the description along with our Octopus referral link. If you're looking to change any supply, energy supply, please click on the link and you'll receive £50 discount on your supply and we get 50 quid as well. Always helps. Over the years, I've seen lots of YouTube videos about installing solar and battery storage, but all of them have been from the positive side and haven't discussed what can go wrong and what can sometimes not go to plan. We now have installed 10.6 kilowatts of solar and 21 kilowatt hours of storage. But this has been a three year journey with many mistakes on the way. And I'm hoping by going through where we went wrong, others can avoid the mistakes we made. So the journey started in April, 2018, when we bought a new property and started to look at updating the heating and what might be possible for generating electricity on site. We got a number of quotes and we looked at installing panels on either the house or our garage and our buildings. And after discussion, we found a company called Energis, link below, who helped design a system. Before this installation could take place, we had to apply to our local district network operator, DNO, and in this case, Northern Power Grid, to request how much PV could be installed on site. Now, normally you don't have to go through this process. If you're around four kilowatts, four or five kilowatts, you don't need to contact the DNO. But if you want to maximize the amount of energy you can generate to the property, consider contacting the DNO makes things easier in the long run and you'll get the idea. We were fortunate that they authorized us with a maximum export allowance of 15 kilowatts for the site. Energist proceeded to design a 10.6 kilowatt system using 36 panels. And this is where our system varies for many. 16 south facing, 10 west facing, 10 east facing, using both the garage roof and various outbuildings. The south facing panels ran through a 5 kilowatt SC5000 solar edge inverter, and the east west panels ran through their own 5 kilowatt SC5000 inverter. The inverters and other components were installed in an outbuilding. This installation location turned into a mistake, which will be discussed in a later video. We managed to get the system installed in 2018, June 2018, on the last part of the FIT scheme. That means that prices are index linked. So something about FIT. Uh, FIT the FIT scheme is now expired, but in as it was um, being demised. Um, there was a stage where they would still index link your payments or they'd be fixed. We got the last of the index linked, which means each year the amount we get paid for the electricity we generate and deemed export goes up with inflation. One of the reasons for such a huge system in 10.6 kilowatts is, is a big system is we had planned to install a air source heat pump or a ground source um, on the property but this didn't fit in with our current ideas um, and it's something we're looking at now for years on um, so this will something will be happening now the inverters were fed through a generation meter and then this was connected to the house. 
and this is where we've got our first problem. When the garage was put in in the 1980s, a cable was laid, uh, this is before we bought the property, um, to provide power. Most of the time when these cables are laid to garages, and this is something to consider when you're installing solar, they're not a high capacity. Um, they're normally 32 amps or the like. Normally 32 amps. And in our case, this is what we had. It was a four mil cable, which would not be up to carrying the kind of ampage that we were talking about with the inverters when set up. We had 10 kilowatts of power, that cable, three kilowatts, maybe four, if you're lucky. So we proceeded to dig a trench. And we dug a trench for 40, uh, 40 meters and installed some 10 mil steel armored and a pair of Cat 6 cables. Um, this allowed us, uh, with the electrician wired it up and certified it, registered it as well. And this kind of work, you must get an electrician involved. Um, and that meant that we had a proper supply to the outbuilding from the house with a 50 amp fuse. But we then hit another problem. And this is where contacting the DNO becomes helpful. We discovered the voltage in the house was too high. Um, without the solar panels in place, it was 255 volts. Once the solar panels were in place and generating power, we were spiking over 260. 270 volts at 265 the inverters uh, go off and <laughs> we got to the stage and even with the in the middle of the night with the electricity at 255 volts if a bulb decided to blow <laughs> it blew <laughs> it was quite nasty actually so we contacted northern power grid and because we'd had the conversations over the capacity that we were allowed, it made the conversation with Northern Power Grid a lot easier because they then said, well, oh, you've been told you can have 15 kilowatts, you've put 10 kilowatts on site, you've, uh, your voltage is too high, we'll go and have a look. And after some monitoring and after uh, quite a few discussions, they tapped the local transformer down and actually they've replaced that transformer now and still tapped um, to 240 volts. Um, and with the way we had the setup before, the voltage would still go up to 255, uh, more on that later, but it wasn't going to 260 and they have a 10% variance that are allowed on the supply. It can go from 218 up to 255 volts. They were fine. So that gets us through 2018, up to the autumn of 2018. Um, and the next video um, is going to go into um, the next part of our journey, which is getting the car, which can use the power that we're generating, into battery storage and also into um, how we made use of the electricity otherwise. Thank you for watching and please take a look at the links below.